we're continuing on in what we call the counseling series tonight. Um, our lesson is a lesson uh, seven in the counseling series, and it deals with the topic of deliverance. Uh, of course, that topic is uh, about uh, the enemy of our soul, the devil, and the demons that he uses. And so we're going to look at a list of scripture tonight covering the, the work of of demons, the warnings against them, and the believer's dominion and authority over every work of darkness. So we'll jump right into this. Leviticus 17, verse 7 is our first reference tonight. Seven seventeen seven. 17, verse 7 of Leviticus. And they shall no longer sacrifice their sacrifices to the goat demons with which they play the harlot. This shall be a permanent statute to them throughout their generations. So in the book of Leviticus, where um, God has given the law to Moses, uh, one of the laws that he gave was um, don't sacrifice to demons. You know, there's a spiritual world out there. Mm -hmm. And when you sacrifice to these idols, there's demons behind them. Mm -hmm. You know, that might look just like a wooden statue mm -hmm. or a graven image, but there's demonic forces and powers behind them. So he commanded his people uh, have nothing to do with them. Leviticus 19.31 Do not turn to mediums or spiritualists. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So another commandment by God himself. Don't turn to mediums or spirit, spiritists. Mine says familiar spirits and wizards. So okay. familiar spirit is like a fortune teller? Yes. In a, in a medium, which is basically the same thing, it's mm. it's an intermediary. It's someone who communicates to the dead on behalf of somebody else. Mm. Or really, they're communicating with a, a demon that impersonates that individual. So it's an intermediary between the living and the dead. And he says, have nothing to do with that. God is very strong in his commands against mm -hmm. that type of activity. 20 verse 6. As for the person who turns to mediums and spiritists to play the harlot after them, I will also set my face against that person. I will cut him off from among his people. Mm -hmm. Very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, what does the King James say there? Mine's a medium, medium. It says familiar spirits and after wizards and go a whoring after them. Okay, familiar spirits and wizards. It's the same type of definition. It's, it's a medium, someone that's um, trying to contact the dead yeah. on behalf Going of another way. the living. Mm -hmm. And God says, this is wrong. <laughs> it's not allowed, don't do it, and if you do, I'll cut you off from, from the people. Yeah. They're very serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, verse 27 of the same chapter, 20th of Leviticus, 27. As for a man or a woman, if there is a medium or a spiritus among them, they shall surely be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones, their blood guiltiness is upon them. But here's an even stronger uh, statement by God of death penalty. He says the death penalty is connected with this kind of occult activity. So God takes it seriously. And so we, we should as well. Deuteronomy 5, verse 9 is the next yeah, verse. God has to see 
the destruction it will bring to a person. Because he knows that it's a fallen, uh, uh, Lucifer is a fallen angel, very disruptive, very cunning, very attractive, but wicked and evil. And if it only brings darkness, it comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And the Lord knows that. Yeah. And it's really a breaking of the first and second commandment. You know, thou shalt have no other gods mm -hmm. before me. Mm -hmm. And you shall not, you know, make an image, a graven image, and bow down before them. Deuteronomy 5 9. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of, of the fathers and the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. The, showing loving kindness, you know, to those who love him. Deuteronomy 18 10 through 12. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. And this passing through the fire is they're offering their children mm. as a burnt offering on the altar to Moloch. So there shall not be found anyone among you who does that or one who uses divination one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or a spiritist, or someone who calls up the dead. Mm. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And because of these detestable things, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. So again, there's utter contempt and hatred by God for this occult activity because they're worshiping the devil, mm -hmm. uh, the very enemy of God. Deuteronomy 32:17. They sacrifice to demons who are not God, to gods whom they have not known, new gods who came lately, whom your fathers did not dread. You neglected the rock who begot you and forgot the God who gave you birth. So God is saying when you sacrifice to these uh, idols, he said you're sacrificing to demons. You know, to them it might just be a statue of this Ashtarte or um, Diana of the Ephesians. Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever the statue was, but behind them mm -hmm. is demonic forces, and that's where they get their power. Next, we go to Judges 9.23. God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Uh, we'll see this in a few places where it talks about God sending an evil spirit. In my mind, I see this as God allowing that, or God giving permission. It's, it's like providential government. God okay. saying, if you you know, these people were evil to begin with, you know, and God's allowing uh, this demonic presence to, you know, make things worse because he was intent on judging these people for their wickedness. And if you read the whole chapter, you see that's exactly what happens. But you will find that phrase. Uh, but we are to understand... <laughs> God loves us, you know, and he's 
for anyone who's seeking God, he's not going to send an evil spirit. Because he said in the gospel, if you know, if we ask our Father for uh, something good, he's not going to give us something bad. If we ask him for an egg, he said mm -hmm. he's not going to give you a serpent. Mm -hmm. And that serpent represents the, the devil. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, so again, this would be an example of providential government where you've got two very wicked men and God saying, giving permission uh, to, to the demons to influence them one way or another. First Samuel 16, 14 through 16. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servants said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man, who is a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. Okay, here again, that it speaks of God sending an evil spirit, but I see this as allowing permission. Mm -hmm. And why did this happen, or how did it happen? You know, is God just arbitrarily saying, I think I'll, you know, send an evil spirit on this guy today. Was this fact, after he went to the witch of Endor? No. Okay. But it's... So he's going downward. His heart yes. was the evil. Yes. Mm -hmm. His heart turned away. He, he became very mm -hmm. jealous. Um, of David, you know, and he tried tried to kill him mm -hmm. uh, this first Samuel yeah it, it is you're you're correct Doris what uh, this is where Saul turned away and went to the witch so so when you when you put your hand and you do something that is a violation of God's commands something sticks to you yeah it says the spirit of God left him well mm -hmm. that only happens when you when you open yourself up to the to the devil, devil, when you when you follow him, when you do what he tells you to do instead of doing what God tells you to Saul, do. Saul Saul the king couldn't serve two masters. No, either. you cannot serve two masters. And so there came a point in his life where he chose another master. And and God, you know, gives permission then for this demonic oppression. Isn't it true that God, God himself had appointed him and anointed he him, did. and then mm -hmm. he turned against God? He did. That's right. In verse 11, he says, I regret that I made Saul king. Mm -hmm. For he has turned back. He has turned back from following me. See, so he, he turned mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Turned his back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he turned his back on God. That's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. 1 Samuel 28, 3-9. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. And Saul had removed from the land those who were mediums and spiritists. He did that early on in his reign. Mm -hmm. You know, when his heart was That's right. <laughs> right before God. Uh, so the Philistines gathered together and came and camped in Shuman. And Saul gathered all Israel together. They camped in Gilboa. Then Saul saw the camp of the Philistines. He was afraid and his heart was greatly troubled. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek for me a woman who is a medium, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman who is a medium at Endor. Then, then Saul disguised himself by putting on other clothes, went 
he and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, Conjure up for me, please, and bring me up, bring up for me whom I shall name to you. See, and that's, that's what they would do uh, through the yeah. demonic powers. Mm -hmm. But the woman said to him, Behold, you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off those who are mediums and spiritists from the land. Why are you laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? And Saul bowed to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord lives, there shall no punishment come upon you for this thing. You know, so he's in blatant rebellion against God. Mm -hmm. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up to you? And he said, Bring Samuel up for me. Then the woman, when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice, and the woman spoke to Saul, saying, Why have you deceived me, for you are Saul? So she did have supernatural knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, once she contacted the dark side, mm -hmm. you know, the devil has knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the king said to her, do not be afraid, but what do you see? And the woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming up out of the earth. And he said to her, what is his form? And she said, an old man is coming up and he's wrapped with a robe. And Saul knew that it was Samuel, and he bowed with his face to the ground and did homage. Now, he didn't see it, but this medium mm. saw something, and he made the assumption, you know, this, this is Samuel. Mm -hmm. I believe it was a, a familiar spirit, you know, mm. a demonic mm -hmm. a spirit um, representing Saul or... Mm disguising himself as Saul or pretending that he's Saul. Mm. Because the story of the um, Lazarus and the rich man, there's a great gulf between the two places. Mm. See, he would have been in Abraham's bosom. Mm. And the devil's side is, you know, the other side. Mm -hmm. And God says there's a great gulf fixed between that you can't pass over one to the other. Mm -hmm. Peter, isn't there a scripture that says that we um, should not talk to the dead? Isn't there another? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there is. It'll, if it curse we'll, we'll probably come, come across it tonight. Mm -hmm. Isn't that massive? Yes. Hmm. So that was First uh, Samuel. Mm -hmm. Okay, First Kings... 22. I'm sorry, yeah, 1 Kings 22, 20 through 24. said, Who will entice Ahab to go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said this, while another said that. Then a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, How? And he said, I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then he said, you are to tice him and also to prevail. Go and do so. Again, God gives permission. Mm -hmm. And I think tonight I'm going to end with Revelation 12 because that shows where the accuser of the brethren is cast down who accuse them day and night before the throne. So in the Old Testament, uh, the devil and the demons had access to the throne. And so we, we see a picture of that here, uh, where it says, who, who will I send to deceive him? And, you know, there's a volunteer, a deceiving spirit, said he would do it. And God said, okay, go ahead. But we see in the New Testament, they've been cast out of heaven. The accuser of the brethren is cast down, and... Uh, we have the glorious Son of God 
you know, sitting on his throne and we rule and reign with him and the demonic spirits have been cast down knowing that they have a very short time. In fact, I think I'll, I'll go there right now because that, that'll lay the groundwork. Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 12. This is not in our lesson tonight, but I think it fits. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 12 speaks of the conflict of the ages between God and the devil. So in verses 1 and 2, you have the woman clothed with the sun, moon, and stars, which is the Old Testament Israel, pregnant with the promise of a coming Redeemer. And then verse 3 says, Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. Of course, that's the devil. Having seven heads, ten horns, very intelligent, very powerful. And verse 4 with his tail, he swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Mm -hmm. And that speaks of Satan's rebellion. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a verse in Isaiah that says the prophet who speaks lies is the tail. Mm -hmm. And so the tail of the dragon is his lies. Mm -hmm. With his lies, he convinced a third of the angels to join him in his rebellion. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and they were cast to the earth. A third of the stars of heaven were thrown and threw them to the earth. And they became the demons. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she would give birth, he might devour her child. And so they're all through the Old Testament, this warfare between God and the devil. Uh, but then Jesus Christ came, a verse, which is verse 5, she gave birth to a son, so the nation of Israel gave birth to Jesus Christ, a male child who would rule all the nations with a rod of iron, which is his, the word of God, the scepter of righteousness, the unbendable standard of his moral law. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Well, that was Jesus after the, his death and resurrection ascended to the Father. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels wage war against the dragon. And the dragon is his angels wage war. And they were not strong enough. There is no longer a place found for them in heaven. And that great dragon was thrown down. The serpent of old was called devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels thrown down with him. So this is the binding of Satan, and they were they were thrown down. So that's why we see in the Old Testament, you know, these demons, even in the presence of God, you know, who shall I send? And a deceiving spirit spoke up and said, I'll, I'll do it. You guys will go. You know, so they had access. That's that's our point we're making here in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Where when Jesus died on the cross, the devil's power was broken. His lies were broken. You know, his atoning work was done. His blood could cleanse the conscience of mankind. And he gave us all power and authority. You know, to cast out demons. Verse 10, I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now, you know, now after the devil's been thrown down after the cross, now the salvation, the power, the kingdom of our God and the authority of our Christ have come. So he came right after the cross and resurrection. For the accuser, the brethren, has been cast down who accuse them day and night before God. So he can't accuse us anymore because mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus removes sin from the conscience. Mm -hmm. Blood of bulls and goats could not do that. Yes. It could only cover it. 
But now since the sin problem is finished, it is finished Hallelujah. from beginning to end, you know, the accuser of the brethren has been cast down. But, verse 13, when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the man, male child. Now he's persecuting the church. Yeah. You know, he's mad. He knows he can do anything up in heaven. So it, all of his efforts are towards deceiving the church. Verse 15, the serpent poured water like a river out of its mouth after the woman. So that he had caused her to be swept away with the flood. And we said before, this the flood of lies. Mm -hmm. It comes out of the mouth of the dragon. And verse 16 says, The earth helped the woman. The earth opened up its mouth and drank in the river, mm -hmm. which the dragon poured out of his mouth. So the, the world, the world system, mm -hmm. the people apart from Christ, they drink in mm -hmm. the lies of the, uh, the devil. And so this flood comes out of the mouth of the dragon. And as Tim shared that verse in um, Daniel 9.26, when the devil comes in, the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up a standard against him. And that standard is, is the church standing in the truth. Mm -hmm. Because the, the war with the devil has always been the lie versus the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the warfare. He's the deceiver. He tries to get Adam and Eve. You, you can sin, you can be in sin, but still be right with God. You know, in fact, you'll become like God. <laughs> and uh, his, his message has not changed. Okay, with that, background let's let's go on to second kings 1717 when they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Yes, so the Lord is very angry with Israel yeah, for the rebellion. And that's, that's the work of the devil, to stir up rebellion against God. Second Kings 21.6 And he made his son pass through the fire, practiced witchcraft and used divination and dwelt with dealt with mediums and spiritists. Mm -hmm. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Mm -hmm. Then he set up the carved image of Ashtra that he had made. So this is Manasseh, mm -hmm. the king. Hezekiah's son. Yeah, he had it's such a great dad, you know, an example, mm -hmm. but you know, he, he just went the other way. Very tragic. And it says God is angry. You know, because he's a jealous God. And now he's setting up, you know, these these statues and false gods. And Second Kings 22, 20 through 24. Go down. Second Kings 23, 24. Well, that was in First Kings, okay. Yeah. Uh, Second Kings 20. 20 21, uh, I, I have, yep, yeah, we just did that. that. Oh. So yeah. Second Kings 23, 24. Yes. Mm -hmm. Someone have that? Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the word words of the law which were written in the book of that Hilkiah 
the priest found in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So Josiah was a good king, and he, he purged the land of these, these um, you know, witches and wizards, removed them. First mm -hmm. Chronicles 10, 13 through 16. So that 14, you want us to go to 16 on that one? Yeah, through 10, 13, and 14. So Saul died for his trespass, which he had committed against the Lord because of the word of the Lord, which he did not keep, and also because he consulted a medium, making inquiry of it, and did not inquire of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Therefore he killed him and turned the kingdom of David to David, the son of Jesse. So he killed him. He died by the swords of the Philistines, but, you know, God allowed it to happen. God said, you know, this guy's gone too far. I'm not going to protect him anymore mm -hmm. uh, because he had gone to the witch. So a very serious... Very serious punishment. Second Chronicles 11.15... And he ordained him priest for the high places, and for the devils, and for the calves which he had made. This is Rehoboam's saying. Yeah, can you imagine that after mm. such an illustrious history? And just... That's the son of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd think they'd know better. Yeah. But this is how deceptive the enemy is. You know, people want power at any cost. Right. And they sell their souls to the devil. It's no different today right. than it was back then. That's true. Yep. Uh, Second Chronicles 33, 6. He made his sons pass through the fire in the valley of Benham, and he practiced witchcraft and divination the sorcery and dealt with mediums and spirits. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Yeah, that's Manasseh again, very similar to what we read in um, Kings. Now we go to Psalm 106, 37. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. And, verse 38, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed under the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Yes. And so God had warned them. He had commanded them. They had the example mm -hmm. of God's judgment upon people that... Uh, practice this and what do they do? They do the same thing uh, because of that lust for power uh, they believe that the, the um, you know Baal the, the demonic spirits are going to give them power honor, prosperity and they serve him Isaiah 8 19 and 20 When they say to you, consult the mediums and the spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony, if they do not break, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. Yeah, the no dawn is, is no light, no understanding. You know, they're stupid. <laughs> you know, how, how can you consult these these wizards and you know instead of consulting mm -hmm. God? 
but they do. And he says, because they're stupid. <laughs> That's what it means when they have no dawn. They don't have light. They're just, they're just wandering in darkness. Matthew 4, 23 and 24. Now we get into the New Testament. But still, this is before the cross. But the demons are still possessing people, and um, you know Christ has authority over them. Do you have that, Doris? And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those which had the palsy, mm -hmm. and he healed them all. Hallelujah. So our Lord Jesus has authority over every, every demonic spirit, spirit, every sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. Matthew 8, 16 and 17. And when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word. See, because he has authority, you know, and they must obey the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He cast them out with his word. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the way it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a ritual. There's not, you know, holding a cross in their face. <laughs> you just <laughs> get out of here, yes. you know. He, he just literally takes authority over them. Mm. Did I read all that passage? 16 and 17. 17. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. He himself took on our infirmities and carried away our diseases. Amen. Mm. Uh, Matthew 9, 32 through 34. And as they are going out, behold, a dumb man, demon-possessed, was brought to him, somebody that couldn't speak. And after the demons were cast out, the dumb man spoke, and the multitudes marveling, marveled, saying, nothing like this was ever seen in Israel. Hmm. Let's see, how far do I go? 34. But the Pharisees were saying he cast out demons by the ruler of the demons. Mm -hmm. Of course, Jesus said that's impossible. Mm -hmm. A kingdom divided well, against itself so. cannot stand. Now, Matthew 10, 7 and 8. Jesus is commanding the, the 12 disciples, sending them out in the cities and villages. Mm -hmm. And he commands them to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, freely receive, freely give. Mm. And so now the authority that Jesus had was transferred to his disciples. Mm -hmm. and, and they did what he told them to do. He came back rejoicing. And he said, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Mm -hmm. Matthew 12, 22 through 29. Then there was brought to him a demon-possessed man who is blind and dumb. And he healed him so that the dumb man saw, spoke and saw. And all the multitudes were amazed and began to say, This man cannot be the son of David, can he? See, that's one thing this, this authority does, is it gives 
you know, credibility to the messenger mm -hmm. and to the message. Mm -hmm. You know, because when they saw him do that, they said, you know, this is not an ordinary <laughs> man. Right. This, this has to be the Messiah. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this man cast out devils only by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand. And if I by Beelzebub cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? Consequently, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come among you. How can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man, and then he'll plunder his house. And of course, Jesus is speaking of, of those that are demon-possessed, those who um, are under the control of the devil, and he went to the cross to bind him, mm -hmm. you know, and it, he's now bound. And so first bind the strong man, and then we plunder the devil's house. He was not... With me is against me. He who does not gather, scatters. Verses yes. 43 through 45 of the same chapter. Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I'll return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, put in order. Then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they go in and live there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. And so he's speaking of someone, you know, that the demon was cast out. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he's not taught. They're not grounded, they're not filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and, you know, they're, they're open. Then the devil comes back, and he said, when they do, they bring in seven worse than them, and he said, the last stays worse than the first. Mm -hmm. and so to me, that's a very strong warning that when people are converted, they need to be filled with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and taught and discipled, mm -hmm. or else the enemy comes right in and and snatches them away. And of course, that was the parable of the sower. The seed on the hard ground, the devil comes and mm -hmm. takes the seed that was sown and, and flies away with it. So that doesn't sound like one saved, always saved to me. Is it to you? Because it's talking about a man, a person. Mm -hmm. I will return to my house. See, because we're we're a spiritual house. Right. We're a temple, yes. we're a temple. Yes. and it, and um, but when it's cast out, when the house is cleansed, put in order, you know, well, that's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's got to be filled with something. Right. <laughs> we need the Holy Spirit yes. there. Amen. You know, we need some good sound teaching. Mm -hmm. And if we don't. You know, things are swept, the house is in order, and here comes the devil back again. And he said, the last state's worse than the first. Now, if that's not a solemn warning, I don't know what is. Because it's Jesus himself speaking, and it's very powerful. But it talks about when the unclean spirit goes out of a man. I mean, I, I don't know how to interpret this any other way. Mm -hmm. Goes through waterless yeah. places. You know, there's no word of God. Doesn't find, it, you know. So I said, I'm going to go back. I'll return to my house, which I, from which I came. 
than seven times more. Yeah. You know, they're <clears throat> when they are yes. when they are cleaned up like that, they come to a crossroads. They have to answer the question, "What will they do with Jesus?" You know. So they have a second chance at making a choice without um, being demonically filled or possessed. To me, this is um, this in some way accounts for a statistic that I've heard that you know is just very grievous to my heart. And the statistic is that um, they, they've done studies that in in the Billy Graham Crusades they studied the converts, those that had come forward, mm -hmm. prayed to receive the Lord. And they found out that only uh, one half of one percent, two years later after the crusade, were still actively involved uh, in a church, faithfully serving the Lord. So what happened? You know, they responded, they came forward, they prayed a prayer, but two years later, you don't find them. It's, it is very you know, a very severe warning uh, from the Lord. Uh, Matthew 13, 4 through, I'm sorry, Matthew 13, 3 and 4. And he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Then 18 and 19. Mm -hmm. Hear the word of the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches what was sown in his heart. Mm -hmm. This is the one whom seed was sown on the road. That's your answer. Yeah. See, so they heard it, they didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. and, and so this this is why we have to work with people, yeah. you know, so that they really do understand mm -hmm. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That when you come to Jesus, it's a total, 100% surrender to him. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't hold part back you know, you're not just praying so that you go to heaven when you die. You know, mm -hmm. like a hell insurance policy. Right. You know, you gotta be it's got to be a total mm -hmm. surrender mm -hmm. to the Lord. So these are the ones that hear it and don't understand that the devil comes, snatches it away. Mm -hmm. uh, 1337 through 40. And he answered and said, the one who, who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. As for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom. The terrors are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. The reapers are the angels. And so it speaks of the devil sowing terrors. He's sowing his lies. Mm -hmm. You know, people believe yeah. the lie, yeah. and they grow up. The wheat and the tares look alike, mm -hmm. but the one is genuine and the other is not. And they're both going to the same church. The wheat and so the tares. <laughs> What's that? That so is more. so more apparent to us now. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. Uh, Matthew fifteen twenty two through twenty eight. Behold, a Canaanite woman came out from that region, began to cry out, saying, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David! My daughter is cruelly demon possessed." But he didn't answer her a word. And his disciples came to him and kept asking him, saying, "Send her away." For she's shouting out after us. 
But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came, came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord. But even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, your faith is great. Be it done to you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. Praise the Lord. Matthew 17, 14 through 21. And when they came to the multitude, a man came up to him falling on his knees before him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and is very ill. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, unbelieving and perverted generation, how long shall I put up with you? How, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked him, that is the demon, and the demon came out of him. And the boy was cured at once. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And he said to them, Because of the littleness of your faith. For truly I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, You shall say to this mountain, Move and from here to there, And it shall be done, And nothing shall be impossible to you. But this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Now we spoke of this incident before. It's not that the demon cannot come out unless you fast and pray. The subject here was unbelief. He says, oh, unbelieving generation, mm -hmm. how long will I put up with you? And then the other occasion in... in I think it's Mark or Luke, we'll read it. Um, the father said, I believe, help my unbelief. <laughs> and, and so the fasting and prayer is so that unbelief will come out of us, you know, mm -hmm. so that we'll believe that we have the authority in Jesus' name yes. to cast out the demons, yeah. you know. Because mm -hmm. when you go through the book of Acts, when they were confronted with demon-possessed people, they didn't say, well, let me come back in five or six days after I've fasted, you know, for a period of time, then I'll help you. Mm -hmm. No, you should come out of him in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, and they came out. And so it's the unbelief yes. that yes. has to come out by prayer and fasting. This kind, yes. this kind of unbelief. And some have said, well, there's yes. certain kind of demons you know, that you have to fast for. Other kind, you know, you can cast them out easily, but there's these, you know, deeply embedded kind that, you know, it takes That's a lot of fasting I've been and prayer. In the past, yeah. You know. uh, but, but we'll see that the disciples, the Lord Jesus, spoke the word, mm -hmm. cast them out, and just took authority over it. <laughs> Jesus more powerful than the devil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than any demon. Mm -hmm. See, and if, if we're spirit filled, we have authority. He gave that to his disciples. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew eighteen eighteen. Truly, I say to you, whoever, whatever you shall bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. So this is the power and authority of the believer. And of course, when Christ died on the cross, he bound Satan. Bound him from deceiving the nations any longer. 
Now we turn to Mark 1, 23 through 27. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone, that we may, that we, no, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou son Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority and commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Mark 5, 1 through 18. There's 1, 32 to 34, if you want that one. Okay, read. And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and with and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. So he cast out many. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Mark 5, 1 through 18. This is the... Gazarene demoniac. Gathering. And they came to the other side of the sea to the country of the Gadarenes. And when they had come out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one was able to bind him any more, even with a chain, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains of been torn apart by him. So the dem demons can give people supernatural strength. Uh, they were broken in pieces. No one was strong enough to subdue him. And constantly, night and day, among the tombs and in the mountains, he was crying out and gashing himself with stones. So just self-destructive behavior. That's the devil. And seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. See, that's the mm -hmm. demon within him speaking. Mm -hmm. For he had been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? So, so Jesus addresses the spirit directly. I mean, he's looking at a man, but he's talking to the spirit. Mm -hmm. What is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to entreat him earnestly to the end, uh, to, not to send him out of the country. Now there's a big herd of swine feeding there on the mountainside. And they entreated him, saying, Send us into the swine, so that we may enter them. Mm -hmm. And he gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirits entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, and about 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. And those who attended them ran away and reported it in the city and out in the country. And the people came to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus, and they observed the man who had been demon-possessed, sitting down, clothed, and in his right mind. And the very man who had the legion, they became frightened. And those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man and all about the swine. And they began to entreat him to depart from the region. 
And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was entreating him that he might accompany him. And he did not let him, but he said to him, Go, go home to your people, report to them what great things the Lord has done for you, and how he had mercy on you. Mm. And he went off and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone marveled. Mm -hmm. So just a true marvel, this mm -hmm. man totally reclaimed. You know, I think demonic possession is, is much more common than most of us think. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is classified as, you know, mental issues. Mm -hmm. but it is a mental issue. It is. <laughs> they have mental problems, but the, but the devil is alive and well in this world. That's for sure. And I think it's interesting that the, the demons could even enter these animals. Mm -hmm. I've some hot times felt that steer, you got a devil. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he tried to take me out. Mm -hmm. But Peter, here, here was a man that they were raising pigs. An unclean animal, it, which it is unclean. they were not to be eating. I and, thought it was um, too. In two thousand, yeah, they were. They were th that was an abomin abomination for food. It was. But, mm. uh, Mark nine seventeen through twenty nine. This is very similar to what we've read before. One of the crowd answered him, Te Teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it dashes him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, stiffens out. And I told your disciples to cast it out. They could not do it. And he answered and said to them, now he's addressing his disciples, O oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. And when, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling about and foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, How long has he, this been happening to him? He said, From childhood. It is very yeah. sad because yeah. nobody becomes demon possessed unless somehow, some way, they open up their heart to it. Mm. But yeah. could could another person put a curse on them if they don't have protection of the Lord? That was That's childhood. possible. It's possible. Mm. But this seems to be a loving father, but it could have come from some other source. And the father said in verse 22, It has often thrown him both into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have mercy on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If I can, it's almost like, it's almost like an insult. Yeah. You know, because he's, he's God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. He has the authority. Jesus said to him, if I can, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the boy's father cried out, began saying, I do believe, help me in my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that the crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, saying to it you deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and do not enter him again. So he commands not only to come out, but he said, go back. stay out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, that corresponds with what we read before, the unclean spirit wandering around, coming back in. Mm -hmm. And after crying out and throwing him into terrible convulsions, it came out. And the boy became so much like a corpse that most of them said he's dead. 
But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up, and he got up. And when he had come into the house, his disciples began questioning, questioning him privately. Why is it that we could not cast it out? And he said to them, This kind cannot come out by anything but prayer. And the other ones are prayer and fasting. But again, mm -hmm. the, the topic was unbelief. Mm -hmm. He said all things are possible to him who believes. And so again, we're making the point here tonight that fasting is not necessary to cast out demons. Mm -hmm. That a believer who is spirit-filled has the authority over demonic spirits. Fasting and prayer is good to build our faith. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that we'd be stronger. I'm not against fasting and prayer. It's wonderful. Uh, but it's not necessary to bring about deliverance. Faith is. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, all things are possible to him who believes. Mark 16, verse 9. Last command to his disciples. Or I went off to heaven. That's later on in Mark. But he, now after he had risen early on the first day of the week, he first appeared to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. So this gal was <laughs> had problems, yeah. but to me it's so lovely mm -hmm. that she was the first one that he saw and revealed himself to after the resurrection. Mm -hmm. So whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he cleanses. When he cleanses, it's complete. And I just love mm -hmm. it that he first appeared to, the, to her. You know, a formerly uh, demon-possessed woman with some kind of a terrible background. Mm -hmm. But she was out seeking for him, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. she, was a, she was not sleeping in that morning. No. 17th verse of the same chapter. And these signs shall follow those who have believed. In my name they'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. See, in my name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he instructs us how, how to do it. It's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the name represents the authority. Now we come to Luke 4, 33 to 36. And there was a man in the synagogue possessed by the spirit of an unclean demon and he cried out with a loud voice ha ah, what do I have to do with you Jesus of Nazareth have you come to destroy us I know who you are the Holy One of God and Jesus rebuked him saying be quiet and come out of him and when the demon had thrown him down in their midst he went out of him without doing him any harm. And amazement came upon them all and began discussing with one another, what is this message? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. And he gave his disciples that same authority. Luke 33 Four thirty-three to thirty-six. That's what I just read. Uh, Luke four forty-one. And demons were coming out of many, crying out and saying, "You are the Son of God." And rebuking them, he would not allow them to speak, because they knew him to be the Christ. Mm -hmm. The demons knew more than the religious crowd. Mm -hmm. 
Luke 8, 2 and 3. You know, is James says the devils will lose and will tremble. Mm -hmm. Luke 8, 2 and 3. And also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and sicknesses. Mary was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, were contributing to their support out of their private means. And again, just a reference to Mary Magdalene mm. and the fact that Jesus cast out those demons. Luke 4, 8, 4, and 5. And when a great multitude were coming together, and those from various cities were journeying to him, he spoke to them by way of a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. Verse 11. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God, and those beside the road are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the seed that was sown so that they may not believe and be saved. So the devil comes with his lies. Luke 8, 26-39. They sa sailed to the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee, and when they came out into the land, a certain man from the city met him who was possessed with demons and who had not put on any clothing for a long time and was not living in a house but in the tombs. And seeing Jesus... He cried out and fell before him and said in a loud voice, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had been commanding the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had seized him many times, and he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard, and yet he would burst his fetters, and he was driven by the demons into the desert. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they were entreating him not to command them to depart from the abyss. Now there is a herd of many swine feeding there on the mountain. The demons entreated him to permit them to enter the swine. And he gave mm -hmm. them permission. And the demons came out from the man and entered the swine. The herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. And those who attended them saw what had happened. They ran away and reported it to the city and out in the country. And the people went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus and found the man with whom the demons had gone out, sitting down at the feet of Jesus, clothed mm -hmm. and in his right mind, they became frightened. And those who had seen it reported to them how the man who was demon-possessed had been made well. And all the people of the country, the Gadarenes and the surrounding district, asked him to depart from them, for they are gripped with great fear. And he got into the boat and returned. So just, again, the same story we read before. Mm -hmm. Just a wonderful story of, of God's deliverance. So people that we think are too far gone, you know, are, are, not, are not to the Lord. We get us not that way about ourselves. Mm -hmm. now Luke ten seventeen. And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall injure you. It's 
say, and if he gave them to, to the disciples before the cross, you know, certainly after the cross, uh, he has given us that same authority over all the power of the enemy. And so they're, they're, if you're confronted in a situation, you, you just have to rise up in your faith and mm -hmm. take authority over mm -hmm. these unclean spirits. Cast them out. Mm -hmm. Cast them out. Have you ever had to do that? Uh, yes. Natasha was with Tim that time. What country was that? Kenya? Yes. Mm -hmm. One woman was on the floor like a snake. Mm -hmm. They said, come out. And she came, they came out. Yeah, and our daughter said she cast out the demons from her home and, you know, yeah. the person mm -hmm. went with it. Mm -hmm. There was a case in Haiti where I prayed over this girl and, you know, they did not come out. And... One of the pastors that was there, you know, explained it. He said the the person has to be willing to give them up, mm -hmm. you know. And so there's people that want that; mm -hmm. they don't want to give it up. And so I learned a lesson there that, mm -hmm. yeah, and I saw the truth of that. That if that's what you want, God's going to give you what you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if the person doesn't want it. You know, then of course you have authority over it and they have to go. And sometimes there will be a little commotion or I've seen them fall over, you know, and then come up in their right minds. Um, you know, I've seen them writhe, I've seen them, you know, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but God is faithful. Well, they torment them so badly. Mm -hmm. Who would want that? In their yeah. Life, you know? I don't think they know anything other than that voice, that torment. Yeah, I, I don't know why they would still want to retain that. But there must be a power, mm -hmm. you know, that they desire. <clears throat> and they're familiar with the spirit. Uh, Luke eleven twenty four through twenty six, and when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through a waterless place seeking rest, and not finding any, it says, "I'll return to the house from which I came." And when it comes, it finds it swept, put in order. Mm -hmm. Then it goes, takes along seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they go in and live there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So in verse 24 and 26, it talks about the spirit going out of a man. So it's, it's a person. Mm -hmm. The one before that we read, it was going out of a house. But here it's more clear, it says a man. Mm -hmm. And so we know that we are the temple. That when you put them both together, you go, oh, it's very clear. Right. Mm. Okay, we now turn to John eight forty four. You are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Yes. So the devil is the father of lies. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and people that live a lie, you know, you're opening yourself up to the father of lies. Mm -hmm. 
God wants us to walk in the truth. The truth has set us free. John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. That thief is the devil who's trying to steal our relationships. Mm -hmm. I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. John 13, verse 2. And during supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of G Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. And again, the devil cannot do that until someone opens their heart to him. You know? yeah. he, he doesn't just overpower him. There has to be permission. He has to somehow, some way, open the door. And I think for Judas, it was a matter of greed, you know, and money, and the love of money mm -hmm. was what the devil used. That was 13 2. Okay, Acts 8, verse 7. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with pal palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in the city hallelujah mm -hmm. so this is the revival that took place with philip the evangelist and lo and behold he's doing the very same thing that jesus was doing mm -hmm. healing the mm -hmm. sick casting out the devils and so the church just carried right on with the ministry of Christ. Acts 10, 8, Acts 10, 38. You know of Jesus of Nazareth, how God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power, how we went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And that was his ministry. And his ministry continues on in the book of Acts. Acts 16, 16 through 18. And it came to pass that we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Mm which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Mm. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So immediately. And when her masters saw that the hope of her hope of their gain was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace under the rulers. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what we want to see here is the name of Jesus, the authority. Mm -hmm. And so there's power in that name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it, the name has to be used uh, with the pure heart. A total conviction. Mm -hmm. The person speaking it must believe for themselves. And that's what we see in Acts 19, 13 through 19. And there are some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempting to name over those who had been, who had the evil spirits. The name of Jesus, saying, I adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they were using Jesus' name, but their hearts weren't right. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't converted people. Mm -hmm. They did not have the authority of God. Right. And so the seven sons of Sceva, one Jewish chief priest, were doing this. And the evil spirits answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus, I know about Paul, but who are you? And the men in whom was the evil spirit leaped 
upon them and subdued both of them and overpowering them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So, so it's not just simply the name of Jesus. It has to come from the heart of a believer who's walking in holiness, who's filled with the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians two twelve. You didn't finish that read. Okay. Do you have it there? The yeah, and this was known after they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Verse seventeen through nineteen says, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found fifty thousand, found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily through the word of God and prevailed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. here was a true deep repentance, and they brought yeah. their magic paraphernalia yeah. and burned it. It's like up in northern mm -hmm. Canada. Yeah, which which must be done. Mm -hmm. You know, it, you have to get rid of it. Yeah, you have yeah. to get it out of the house. Mm -hmm. You know, anything that's associated with devil worship yeah. mm -hmm. must be gotten rid of. Yeah. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.12 Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Yes. We don't have the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13. I think this one you know. No temptation has overtaken us, but such as is common to man. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond which you are able. So the devil cannot make you do anything. He can tempt you. He can offer his suggestion. He can whisper his lies. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the temptation... Uh, God will provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And as we said before, the way of escape is saying no to the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do this thing that you're mm -hmm. that you're suggesting to me. That's right. First mm -hmm. uh, Corinthians, and let's start with First Corinthians 10. Let's start with 20 through 22. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to become partakers in demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. Mm -hmm. It's one or the other. Mm -hmm. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of mm -hmm. demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We're not stronger than he, are we? No, no, we're not. So he said, separate yourselves mm -hmm. from anything that's demonic at all. That includes horoscopes, you know, fortune tellers, you know, all that kind of thing. Jesus says, separate yourselves from those things. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we had, we all had our conversation in times past in the mm -hmm. lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And so verse 2 tells us 
that the spirit of the devil is now working in the sons of disobedience. Mm -hmm. So anyone who is not following the Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. the devil is working in their life. That's right. They may mm -hmm. not be demon possessed mm -hmm. at the moment, but he's he's sure working in their life. Mm -hmm. They're following him, you know, and it only becomes a matter of time, mm -hmm. you know, that they open their heart more and more to him. But that's, to me, that's an interesting yeah. verse that he's now working. I think people are disillusioned by that. Too. Yeah, he is now working in the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 4.27 And do not give the devil an opportunity. One before that says, be angry. Do not sin, don't let the sun go down in your wrath, don't give the devil an opportunity. So Paul's counseling the Christians, you know, don't open the door. Mm -hmm. Anger might be one way, unforgiveness might be a way, mm -hmm. bitterness can be a way, but don't open the door to the devil. Right. Amen. End of story. <laughs> Ephesians. 6, 10 through 18. This is the armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take, ye, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you are able to quench the fiery darts of the devil, of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and up and supplication for all saints. Mm -hmm. and so Paul tells us that this armor is necessary that we can stand firm against the wiles and the schemes of the devil, uh, because he's after believers. That's what we read in Revelation 12. You know, he, he goes after the woman. Mm -hmm. But God gives the woman the two wings of an eagle, the spirit and the truth, so we can soar. Mm -hmm. But the water is coming out of his mouth to try to mm -hmm. sweep away the woman. The water of his lives. Mm -hmm. Now, 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2. But the spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith. There is one and only faith. The faith. Mm -hmm. Paying attention to deceitful spirits in the doctrine of demons. By means of hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with the branding iron. So doctrines of demons. Some will fall away from the faith. No one saved, all is saved. If it was, how could you fall away from it? Right. Think about that. Yeah, by means of, yeah. But in the latter times, and it says the Spirit says expressly or specifically, some will fall away from the faith because they're paying attention to these deceitful spirits. And these deceitful spirits your message is, you can still sin and make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Nobody can really be holy. Mm -hmm. you know, these are his lies that come out, and they sound so convincing. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Nobody's perfect. We're only human. Right. We're okay. born yeah. sinful. Yeah. You know, and all of the, their doctrines of demons. Uh, and when people believe them, they yeah. open themselves up to even more deception. But some will fall away from the faith. 
paying attention to deceitful spirits. See, they're deceiving. And the way they deceive, like I said, is, is to get people to believe false things about God. You can go into the horoscopes and whatever. And yeah. Believe that. It's okay. Yeah, there's one drink is yeah, gonna really okay. hurt. You know, I can try it this one time. Nope. You see, that's a deceitful spirit. Second Timothy one seven. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that we should know better. Minds of self control. Uh, James 2.19. You believe that God is one, you do well. The demons also believe and shudder. Mm. Mm. So they, they know the Bible. Mm-hmm. They don't have saving faith, but they, they know about God. In fact, the demons we read about in the Gospels, you know, they, they identified Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, you're the son of the living God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't tell anybody. <laughs> but they were announced that they knew who it was, mm-hmm. who Jesus was. They believed in him. but not for eternal life. 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. Be of a sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, Mm. the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Stand firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren, or in the world. Mm. So resist the devil, he said. Stand firm in your faith. And they, they stood firm in the, fir- the face of persecution. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're thrown to the lions. Yeah. And they would say, yeah. I would rather be eaten by the lion than to renounce my faith. Mm-hmm. And so then the devil had to try another tactic. Uh, Peter says, resist him. If it wasn't a problem, why would that command be there? Right. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Yeah. Uh, second. Uh, first John two fifteen to seventeen. I love this verse. It says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Yes. First John 3, verse 8. The one who practices sin is of the devil. Mm -hmm. For the devil has sinned from the beginning, and the Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. No one who is born of God practices sin, because the seeds abide in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Mm. So he has the power to overcome it. As long as he's born of God, he's not going to. He's going to say, no, I can't do this thing. He still has a free will. The cannot is, I will not. It's like George Washington, you know, history tells us. <laughs> it's a myth anyway, you know, that he chopped down the cherry tree and when his dad confronted him and he said, dad, I cannot tell a lie. You know, I cut down the tree. So, when he said, I cannot tell a lie, it was not that he lost his free will. He's mm-hmm. saying, I'm a Washington. You know, I'm not going to lie to you, Dad. Mm-hmm. I'll take responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so I believe it's the same sense here in 
First John, the one who is born of God cannot sin. Mm -hmm. That the cannot is not going to. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, by his power, by the Holy Spirit within me, mm -hmm. I'm not going to. Again, it can happen, mm -hmm. but if we sin, we confess it and, and go on. Mm -hmm. But like George Washington said, I cannot tell a lie. Mm -hmm. He was capable, but it, but his attitude, I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and that needs to be the attitude of the Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, Revelation 2, verse 10. Do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison, that you may be tested, that you'll have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. <laughs> now this is Jesus speaking, and he's speaking to the church. And he said, Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison. Mm. Now Jesus mm -hmm. bound the devil. He bound him from deceiving the nations. But he still goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. And he still has the same ministry of trying to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. and he said, mm -hmm. the devil's going to you know, throw you into, some of you into prison, but be faithful unto death. Mm -hmm. So the promise is, I'll, I'll be with you. Resist the devil. Uh, Revelation 9.20 And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands so as not to worship demons and the idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood which can neither see, hear, nor walk. Mm. So he's saying they, they didn't repent of their uh, worship of demons. And so that's the ungodly. Even mm -hmm. in the New Testament era, they're really worshiping demons. Whether they know it or not, that's who they're serving. Mm -hmm. When they, when they uh, live for the devil. Revelation 16, 13, and 14. And I saw it coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. Mm -hmm. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs, which go out to the kings of the whole world, to gather them together for the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. And so the spirits of mm -hmm. demons are still working in this world. Mm -hmm. So that's the end of the lesson there, but let's draw some conclusions. You know, the, we've read all these verses. What can we conclude, you know, about the reality of demonic spirits? We live in a spiritual world. Yeah. There's things we see, and there's a whole lot that we don't see, but we have to discern it, and we yeah. you don't follow it the devices revealed. of the world. In the Pope's lives. Yeah, so I agree that that there's a reality. Demonic activity is a reality. Mm. You know, demon yeah. possession is a reality. Um, you know, in our generation, they just call it mental illness or give mm -hmm. it another name. And, and I'm not discounting that there could be such a mm -hmm. thing as mental illness. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I also believe that some is demonic mm -hmm. activity. And when people give themselves over to drugs, to me they're opening their heart mm -hmm. up. Or alcohol. To or sex. demonic mm -hmm. activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, I was reading through Cindy Smock's report from the campus preaching. And she just, um, she had the kids that were in depression raise their hands and she said just a great number they're oppressed of the devil yeah they are oppressed of the devil mm -hmm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. But oh, she's bringing the word of hope to us. Certain That's home. Many are turning to the Lord. And so another conclusion, I, I think they're more prevalent than we realize. But also through the atonement, uh, we have authority over all the power of the devil mm-hmm. through what Christ mm-hmm. has accomplished on the cross. And I believe that sin opens the door for demonic activity in the lives of people. It did for Judas. Mm-hmm. It did for Cain. It did for Cain. Mm-hmm. And uh, for even Saul. and Jesus was even aware of the plot against Peter. He said, Peter... Satan has desired to sift you like wheat, Mm -hmm. but I prayed for you that your faith fail not, Mm -hmm. and that when you're converted, you know, um, minister to your brethren. So I'd like to close in prayer. Uh, As we go on in this lesson, uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll talk more of the authority that we have, and more of the how-tos of deliverance. So, Father, I thank you for the lesson of the night as we have looked from the beginning of the Bible to the Revelation, and we've seen throughout the pages of Scripture, Lord, this warfare between God and the devil. And the devil wants to deceive and to take as many people to hell as he can. He does not want to suffer alone there in eternity, but he wants company. And Lord, you want us to love you and serve you because you're worthy. Mm -hmm. You are a God of truth, and the devil Mm -hmm. tells lies. He's a deceiver. And people are deceived into thinking that if they follow him, they'll get everything they want in this world. But Father, you are the God of truth. And I thank you that you set us free Mm -hmm. from the power of the devil. Mm -hmm. Lord, I thank you that his lies are broken. I thank you that you've given to your church the two wings of an eagle, your spirit and the truth. And when you fill us with the Holy Spirit, the devil cannot, his attacks uh, cannot come. The curse causeless will not alight. And you protect us. Mm. So, Father, we thank you for that, that we have all authority in your name. And so, Father, thank you for (laughs) showing us these things through your word tonight. And seal them to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I need your help here. I went like this to turn it, and it just went to the... Yeah, I'm still going to be recording.